Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful morning outside of Moab, Utah. I'm just a few miles outside of the border, outside of the boundary of Arches National Park. And I'm going to be exploring part of that park today that I've never been to. And I'm guessing you've never been to either because it's kind of remote. It's not really connected road-wise to the rest of the park. And it's not very well known. And so I'm excited to explore it a little bit and share it with you a little bit. So here is a map of arches. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the this line being the the border of the park around here. And so this is the let's see where are we? This is the main entrance to the park, the one close to Moab. And then this is the main road that goes through the park, delicate arches over here. And I'm going to be exploring this section up here, this weirdly shaped section. So this is called the Lost Springs Canyon area, or rather Lost Spring Canyon. So this canyon right here, this area right here was added to the park in 1998. So it's a relatively recent addition to the park. It's bounded on a couple of sides here by Lost Spring Canyon Wilderness Study Area, which is BLM land. So I'm camped somewhere up here now, a little bit off the map, but I'm going to be driving to here where it says Lost Spring Canyon or Lost Springs Canyon Road. Okay, this is confusing. This road is Lost Springs Canyon plural, but the canyon is called Lost Spring Canyon. So forgive me if I conflate the two if I mix them up here. But there are a couple of of parking areas here. And those are the trailheads I'm going to, to drive to. Then I'll hike down into the canyon and maybe up this way a little bit. And I think we're going to make one stop on our way to the National Park boundary here. go. I know it's hard to see with the sun shining right in our faces here, but this is what I wanted to see. So this area here, this is called the Poison Strip. Not sure what that name comes from, but this is the Poison Strip Mine. At least that's what people call it. That is really cool. I mean, that's in great shape. So I think vehicles would pull in under here, like trucks, and then they'd be loaded up with, with ore to haul out of here. Don't quote me on that, though. I'm not a, not a mining expert. Although I have been watching a lot of Gold Rush in the last couple of months. They did not mine gold here, however. I'm not sure what they mined. My guess would be uranium, but I'm not entirely sure. Here's the top of the thing. I'm not going to be walking out there. There's a, an engine or some other mechanical contraption over there. Here's the back side of it. Some sort of cable hanging down. Pretty neat. I'm surprised it's still standing after all these years. I guess these are just giant pieces of wood here. That is solid. I think this was the only stop I wanted to make before getting to the National Park boundary. So let's get back in the car and drive on to the Arches National Park boundary where we're going to start hiking. I'm at the trailhead now. I'm the only one here. 
The trailhead isn't marked, at least it isn't here. Uh, this is the way I'm going. I think you might be able to drive a little bit farther across the rocks here, but you'd, you'd need high clearance. So let's go walk over this short little distance, see if we can look down into the canyon that, uh, that we'll be hiking into. So here's my first look at the canyon here. That I'm following this road down into here, I think. And this is still, um, I think this is BLM land still. I'm not at the National Park boundary quite yet. After hiking about nine tenths of a mile, in about 17 minutes I'm at the park boundary. The sign here says Arches National Park boundary. There's another sign right here, Arches National Park. This is a protected area. These kinds of fences are interesting. They're over draws or washes like this, and they keep cattle out, but they can still let water flow. Okay, let's see if I can... How do I get through this fence here? I guess I can just crawl under. Oh no, there's actually a fence here. <laughs> Great. Let's see, let's unwrap the wire here. Step through. This would be easier to do if I weren't holding a camera. Okay. And just like that, we are officially in Arches National Park. And the rest of this hike will be in the National Park. Uh-oh, it looks like the fence isn't keeping out all bovine intruders here. That's too bad. Well, so far the trail is just following this little path in a, in a dry stream bed and it's just kind of brushy and there's a little bit of minor bushwhacking involved, like right here. So nothing to write home about just yet, but we do get to some interesting stuff up here, uh, up ahead, I know. You come to Arches National Park expecting to see arches. And so sure enough, we have our first one of the day right in front of me here. It's right here. I don't think you can really see it yet. But you can kind of see where it would be if you could see it. Right there. So let's get a little bit closer. Let me see if I can get right underneath the thing. For reference for this hike, I'm using a website called gjhikes.com. It stands for Grand Junction Hikes. And this guy who's based out of Grand Junction, Colorado, which is just over the border in Colorado from here, he has done just a, a ton of hikes in this area and he's done a great job of documenting them. He's got pictures and GPS tracks and all the good stuff. So definitely recommend checking out his site if you're if you're in this area. So here we are. Here is the first arch of the day. It's called Lightning Bolt Arch, which is a name that I approve of. From the left end of the opening to the right end, it's probably, oh, 20 or 30 feet. Maybe a, a few feet high at the, the widest point there. Awesome. Let's go find the next one. Ooh, let's go check out this cave over here, this cavern. I climbed up into the, the back of the cavern here. So cool. 
Oh, and we have another arch. This is called Cavern Arch. Again, an excellent name that I approve of. This arch is almost, almost, but not quite in the ceiling of this cavern. It's kind of off to the side a little bit. That's amazing though, what a spot. I love this sandstone wave here, this multicolored wave. You have that beautiful lighter orange cream color and then the horizontal bands of faded brown running through it. And I don't know how well you can see it, but in those, those brown horizontal stripes, you can see how they weather differently. They have more holes in them compared to that lighter cream colored rock on either side. Isn't that interesting? Check out this row of caves over here. I don't think any of them are arches yet, but I think if you give it another few millennia, it'll have a nice trio of arches there. So up until now, I've been hiking down one canyon over there, and then I reached a point where two canyons meet, and at that meeting point, I hooked a left, made, made a sharp left turn, and now I'm going up the neighboring canyon, the other branch of the, of the Y here. And there's one more thing I want to see here, then I'll have a decision to make. Do I want to retrace my steps the way I came, which would be the easy way to go, or do I want to hike out of the canyon up this way and try to find my way back to my car over uh, some new ground. Not entirely sure yet, let's get to the next spot and then I'll make a decision there. There's water here, and so all of this sand is wet and sticky and muddy. And so when I go over here and then try to step up onto the rock, my shoes are still sandy, and so I can't really grip onto the rock. Let me try, maybe I can try it over here. You can see all this sand coming off of my shoes here. Maybe if I start earlier, maybe if I start like right here, I can traverse over. I can't. <laughs> I can't do this. This isn't. This isn't doable. I'm gonna try to. I guess I'll have to backtrack and get up on the bench on top of the the canyon here on the side of the canyon. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> okay, the sun is getting higher in the sky and a little bit more fierce. And I didn't bring my my uh, you know my neck shade thing that I usually wear that can clip onto my hat. But I realized, I remembered that I had this thing. I had a buff in my backpack. I always have one of these. So I look like a little bit of a dork, but I'd rather look dumb than have skin cancer, you know? Okay, I found a way to get on top of this, the slick rock bench up here uh, above that canyon section that I couldn't get past. And two interesting things have presented themselves to me here. The first is a rope. I was just walking along and I saw this rope on the ground here. Now this rope, I've been around a lot of ropes in my day. Uh, this one is definitely not in good shape. 
you can see how discolored it is. It's been bleached by the sun. So it's been here a while and I would not consider it safe to use anymore. I looked at the end of it here. It is a eight and a half millimeter by 150 foot Sterling Canyon Prime rope. So this is a canyoneering rope, which means I'm guessing that it's a static rope. It doesn't have any stretch in it. I know that there are some technical canyons around here that people do. Maybe up here somewhere, maybe you can rappel in and hike down or something, I don't know, but uh, since this has been here a while, obviously, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pack this out, because um, this is just trash at this point, so I'm gonna pack this out, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but anyway, that's the first thing of interest. And then the second one is the arch that I came here for. It's just right around the corner here. Look at that beauty. It's a big, beautiful arch. So this is called Convert Arch. I think some people also call it Covert Arch, but I believe the proper name is Convert. Now, the trick is that I want to get up there. And I have no idea how. I do not have any information on how to get up there. And as you can see, this is a, <laughs> a steep-sided canyon. I can't exactly just walk my way up this, right? So I think the plan is to, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna make my way up the canyon here and see if I can find a, a lower angled, maybe a ledge system or a gully or something that I can follow either to get up to the rim on this side up to the rim on this side. I hope I can, because if not, I'm going to have to retrace my steps all the way back the way I came. And I'd rather cover new ground than cover ground I've already done, even though it'll take me even longer once I get back up to the rim, if I do, to go way around back to my car. Anyway, let's see how long it's taken me so far. Two hours, it's taken me two hours to get here. Okay, so it took me a little bit less than that to get back because I wouldn't be stopping. But let me spend 15 or 20 minutes wandering around here, trying to find a way out. Then I'll get back to you. I saw one mention online of someone doing it. No, that's not true. I saw one mention online of someone saying that it could be done, but I don't know where that guy got his information because he hadn't done it, so. Anyway, <laughs> wish me luck. Well, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is that I won't be able to get out over here. Uh, it is just a solid slot canyon, just a, <laughs> just a steep cleft in the rock right here that I cannot climb up. So that's the bad news. The good news is that I only wasted about two minutes trying to ascertain whether I could get out of here this way. It's literally, I mean, it might even just be one minute after I recorded that last clip, so it didn't take long for me to figure out that this was not the way, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna return to the main canyon, see if I can spot another way out. You know, I don't necessarily need to get out of the canyon here, like right next to the arch. If I can do it a little bit farther away and then just walk over to the arch, that's fine too. But again, I'll let you know what I find out if I come up with anything. Okay, it's just another couple minutes later. I dead-ended in this canyon over here. The arch is just around the corner right here. I found the rope just right here. I think I might be able to get out somewhere over this way. At least I think I can get up below that uppermost cliff band over here. It's, it's low angle enough that I think I can, I can get up there. So that's a good first step. Let's, let's go try that. See if I can get out over there. Also, Found this little mini baby arch right here. Pretty cool. Wow. I don't know if you can hear that echo, but that is the clearest echo I've ever heard. Wow.
So things are looking promising, actually. I'm basically at eye level across the canyon now from the arch over there. I'm at the base of the final, the final cliff band here. And I think I've actually found a way through, believe it or not. I think I can just scramble up, up this way, up the crack there. I'm not going to celebrate yet because I haven't done it yet, but I'm cautiously optimistic. You know, I have to admit, I was fully prepared to get up to the base of this cliff here and not be able to find a way and just wallow in, in defeat. Much to my surprise, I found a way and now I'm doing whatever the opposite of wallowing in defeat is. I guess, reveling in victory. I don't know if you can see, let's see, the arch over here. Ah, <sighs> that's where I'm headed next. Problem is I'm gonna to have to get down below this last this last cliff band again because while I do want to go walk over like next to the arch and maybe even on top of it, I'd really like to get down below it, underneath it. And so that's what I need to do. Luckily, I, I think I see a break in the cliffs over there that will be significantly easier than what I just did. So we're good, things are looking up. There's a little bit of confusion online as to whether the arch is entirely within Arches National Park or not. So right now, I am no longer in the park. Once I got up on top of the rim, once I climbed up that, that last little cliff, I'm now outside of the National Park. The canyon rim is the boundary of the park. And so some people say that the, the arch is entirely within the park, in which case you wouldn't be allowed to walk on top of it because you're not allowed to walk on top of arches in Arches National Park. But if it's just like on the boundary, on the border, maybe you can. I don't know. I think just to be safe so I don't broadcast my crimes to tens of thousands of people, <laughs> I'm not going to walk on top of it. But I do want to get underneath it, so that's the next, the next challenge, I guess. But before I leave this viewpoint here, which is a great spot to to look at the arch from. Let me zoom in with my other camera, with my super zoom camera here. And that is the arch. Again, that's Convert Arch. If I can find the stats as far as the, the width and the height of the opening, I'll put that on the screen here. That's a beautiful arch. It's got a nice shape to it, nice and round. And I should mention here that I've been hiking for more than two and a half hours now. I've not seen a single other person. It is the weekend in March. It is the weekend of spring break in Utah. There are tens of thousands of people in the Moab area right now, and I haven't seen a single one of them. If I do say so myself, I give pretty good tips on where to go. So if you enjoy this video, if you want to see more stuff like this, Give this video a like, hit that like button, hit that thumb up button, and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And then I have, you know, five years of videos, four, four or five years of videos of adventures you can go back and, and watch and enjoy if, you're, if you are new to the channel. And if you just want to get to this arch, if you just want to get to this area without all the hassle that you've seen me go through, there is a way to just drive to a parking lot to a trailhead not far from here, then just walk across this flat ground up here to this area. I'll put the, the GPS coordinates for that trailhead in the video description and I'll put a link to the, again, to the gjhikes.com website about this. It's just called the, the Covert Arch Trail, I think. Oh, and I just found this little cairn here, this pile of rocks. I figured that must be a good sign, and indeed it is. It's marking the spot where it's Seems to be pretty easy to get below the, the rim rock here and then walk over to the base of the arch. So let's do that. 
I once asked a park ranger here in Arches National Park what counts as an arch. Like how big does it have to be? Or, you know, can a, a little six inch by six inch hole, is that, is that an arch? Can that be considered an arch? I think what she said was that it has to be a meter by a meter. That's what the opening has to be. So about three feet by three feet for it to be considered a proper arch. Otherwise it's just a hole in the rock. I don't know if that's canon. I don't know if that's universally accepted, but that's what she told me. To me, arches are the closest thing in nature to cathedrals or to temples or churches or synagogues or whatever holy place you want to insert there. They're just, just beautiful structures that make you want to sit and think and ponder. And like the more famous cathedrals of the world, like your, you know, your, your Notre Dame, there are there are arches that are that you just have to see, you know, delicate arch, landscape arch. You have to tick them off of your list. They're spectacular. They're justifiably famous and popular. They're worth seeing, but you lose something there, you know? If you go into a place like Notre Dame expecting to worship, I think you're probably going to be a little bit disappointed, or at least it'll be harder for you to do that. And it's similar with arches. If you're going to a, a, a place like Delicate Arch or Landscape Arch to commune with nature, to enjoy peace and quiet. I mean, that's just not what you're going to find there. But just like how you can, you know, drive out to a, <laughs> to a small village out in the country and, and find your own little gem of a cathedral or church or whatever, there are these little off-the-beaten-path gems of arches here in, Ar in Arches National Park and beyond where you can still feel that, you can still feel something, you can still sit in silence and just be there with your thoughts and, and just uh, you know, soak up the, uh, the intention of the place. I've been to the, to the Notre Dames of the Western United States and now more increasingly my goal is to find the, the little country chapels that are maybe objectively less impressive but also subjectively more beautiful in their own way. One last look at this beauty, and it's time to hit the trail again. What a place. I'll show you some snippets of the hike back here as I somehow make my way back to my car, but I'm not gonna give you a super detailed blow by blow. I'm just gonna focus on hiking and enjoying the scenery. And then as is often the case, I'm not sure yet what my next move is gonna be, what my next part of the plan is, but I'll let you know when I find out. Well, everyone, it is several hours later. I made it back to my car after a few hours of hiking. It took a while to get back to the car. It wasn't super interesting hiking, to be honest. It was just kind of through rolling desert that didn't have much variation to it. So it took a while. Let me go over some stats here really quick. Distance 10.62 miles, total time six hours, 10 minutes. So. Quite the 
quite the hike, quite the little endeavor. It's a little bit longer than I was anticipating, to be honest, but you know, worked out fine in the end, and uh, I'm glad I did it. That was, a, that was a really fun adventure. It is now 4.40. I've found a campsite. I'm ending early today, or at least ending my travels early today, because I want to take a shower. I've got something to show you in that regard in a minute here. But let me show you this campsite. It's a pretty cool spot. So here's the area that I was in earlier today, this general area out here. These are the, the La Salle Mountains again, and I camped basically several miles this way last night. If I'm camping in the same general area, I try to find another campsite. So I drove, I don't know, 10 miles to the north to find this spot, which I'm really happy about. We have this dramatic canyon as a backdrop. Just a beautiful, beautiful place. And I haven't seen a single other vehicle out here. And that reminds me, I didn't see a single person on that entire hike for six hours and 10 miles. I didn't see a single other person. That's pretty great. And like I said, I'm gonna take a shower now and oh, I forgot I can't see the screen with these sunglasses on. Again, this is the new camera that I'm using and I'm still getting used to it. And so it's frustrating me in a couple of areas, but yeah, I'm gonna take a shower now and have a new shower set up to show you. I'm testing this out. So this is the Julka Hot Tap version two. And basically this is an on-demand hot water heater and they sell a kit so where it's a whole shower setup and I have it hanging from my cargo box here. And then you have your water reservoir. This is a six gallon jug that I bought at Walmart. It's around $15. You have the end of the tubing going down into the, uh, into the, the jug there this blue tube goes to a water pump so that pump sucks water out of there and pushes it into this thing this thing heats up the water using this thing this is a five pound propane tank i've been carrying that in the cargo box on this trip so the water gets heated up in here and then it comes out via the red tubing to this shower head that has a switch on it. There's also a magnet on here. Not the strongest magnet in the world, but I guess it's decent enough. And if you pull it off, let me show you here. All you have to do to turn it on is flip the switch and out comes your shower. Got to save on water here, but I just wanted to show you that. And you can adjust on this thing how hot the water is and how much water comes out. I have it on the lowest setting, on the on the least hot setting, and then the lowest amount of water because I want to save both water and propane. I guess I don't really need to save propane. I mean, this'll, this'll last me a while, I think. But anyway, I've tried to set it up before. I ran into some technical difficulties. This is actually the first time that I've gotten it working and all together, and, and this is the first time that I'll be using it. So let me take a shower here and um, I'll let you know how it goes. I have a, a privacy tent, I have a shower tent in here, but I don't know, those are kind of a pain to set up, so I'm just gonna switch into my, my swimsuit and put some, some flip-flops on and just shower out here. It's relatively warm outside and, and it's sunny, and so as long as it stays relatively not windy, it should be okay. It's about 65 degrees right now. Well, it worked. That was actually a great little shower. Um, <laughs> as soon as I ended that last clip, it started to get windy and so of course I had a kind of a cold windy shower but as far as the water goes the water was nice and hot that felt great uh, I really actually enjoyed that shower I don't know how much water it used up you'll have to consult the the video review that I do where I'll I'll measure all of that stuff and I'll let you know um, I haven't checked now but uh, it's really nice this is a nice and hot shower you know between the extreme dryness of the air here and the little bit of breeze that I had. My hair dried almost instantly after I turned off the water on the shower. That was that was interesting. And uh, also I realized that there are screen protectors you can get for cameras um, that make it so that you can wear polarized sunglasses and see see the screen. And so I just ordered some of those. I have pretty good reception here actually, so I ordered some of those that should work with this camera. And uh, I think I'm gonna end the video here. I've got some little camp chores to do, like rearrange a couple of things and 
put water from my big water bottle jugs into smaller water bottles that I take with me on my hikes. That kind of thing, it's not super interesting, so I'll spare you the details, but hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time today. I, I, I just got a kick out of, out of visiting a part of Arches that I've never been to before. Like I said, I'm very familiar with that park, and so uh, I'm just, just happy, I'm tickled <laughs> that I was able to do that, that I didn't see a single person the entire day out there. That's just crazy to me. Yeah, no complaints though. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what your experiences have been like in Arches National Park. I'll play you out with some drone footage of the campsite here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.